Right, this is going to be a continuation on the previous video where I created the M1 carbine reload animation and I'm going to show you how I kind of set up the uh, project or maybe this one will be first and I want to be second because that actually makes sense. So I'm not going to be using this project. This is the old one that had contained all my reload information, and all, well just all my animations that I have to pretty much redo. So since I'm going to be starting on the M1 or the uh, Storm Bear, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the new project and show you how I set that up. So for starters, I'm going to export just the weapon itself, so the mesh and the armature. FBX, I'm going to overwrite, just use my normal profile, and close it. So now I have this other one here. So I'm going to make one dedicated to weapons real quick while I'm at it. Why not? Okay, so I want to go to units, set the unit scale to 0.01, and press N, go to view. I'm going to set the ending to be 50 meters, just so I can see a good bit farther. Delete the collection. I'm just going to go ahead and save this as weapon setup. So I want to use this as the base. So I'm going to file, save as. I want to call this one STG44 with a space so I know the difference and save it. So now we're on that file and what we're going to do is we're going to import that the weapon like so. And scaling and everything is still set to zero, but it's to 100 on the mesh. So I'm going to control A and set just all transforms. Same thing for the mesh or the armature. Now I want to go ahead and actually create a dedicated root bone just for this. I'm going to go into edit mode. The side, the armature selected actually, I want to set it to be in front. Oh, wait, never mind, it already has a root, duh. So, there's the root. And that is kind of incorrect. So, I want to show you what I mean. I want to go ahead and export this. I'm going to actually export it again. I'm just going to overwrite it. And I'll just do it in content. Uh, skeleton actually. Do the root. Oh. Oh, wait, never mind. That actually is correct. That is my fault. So I was thinking the, uh, I got myself confused a bit. So from looking at it, I go to wireframe and zoom in. Wait. What bone is this then? Oh, that's the. Wait, what? Oh, that's not the root. So this is. I want this to be the root. So that's where I screwed up. Uh, yeah. So I want to select all the bones. Parent them. Control P. Keep offset. And give this the name of root. I have magazine two. So you're that one. Then select the root. Control P. Keep off. Wait a second. Ah, oh, dang it. Select you. Select you. Then keep offset. So now we have the root. So I'm just going to rename this one to armature. Or bones, I mean. And rename this to armature. So now, this should move pretty much everything around that I actually need to, because we're not going to be really doing much with the root. What I want to do now is I want to go edit mode. I know this is unnecessary, but I need this little 
able to do the root like this, but I need this little tip here to be at the dead center of the word origin. So I'm going to select the end. There's this side. I'm going to rotate. Actually, I'm just going to set the uh, head to be 0, 0, 0. Set the roll to be 0. And 0, 0. And now it's completely vertical. And I'm just going to bring it down on the z-axis a bit. And leave it there. So now this is at like 100% center of the world. So now I want to select the weapon and the armature, export it, and just import it to make sure it looks okay. All right, root's good, controls everything that it needs to, and we're good there. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to move it, I guess just into there. Why not? Ah, screw it. Did it just move it? What the heck? Ah, oh, whatever. Alright, fine, screw off. Just not going to deal with you then. I think that's what's causing the issue. So I'm just going to. Oh, it's no longer there. Make sure these are empty. Okay, so whatever. Now I just want to make a quick little change. I want to go ahead and delete the uh, empty cases right here. So I'm going to go to just select the armature, select each of these bones for the casings. Press X, dissolve bones, select the mesh, and I'm going to do select through. I'm going to just select what I can, control L to select all, and delete vertices. Oh, we still have this little portion here. I set it to face select. And just delete the remainder of those vertices. So now we're pretty much ready to go. We can continue this yeah, with this. And I kind of want to level this out a bit. Just going to rotate it down a hair. Control A, all transforms. Select the mesh, same exact thing. Oh, that's probably angled down just a bit. Now I want to attach a line trace to the muzzle. And this will be uh, kind of what we use to dictate our point of impact for where we're aiming so we can get the iron sights exactly where we want them. Then we adjust the point of impact based off of that uh, muzzle bone. So I'm going to shift A, create a new cylinder. Go to side view. I'm going to go up, put it at the, uh, the bottom at the world center. When I press F3, set origin. So now I have this guy. I'm going to go ahead and just change the size I want. So I'm going to do 0 0.15 or 015, sorry, and set the length to 10 meters. And press Control A and set all transforms. So now I'm going to take this, go to Object Constraints, Copy Transform, select the bone or the armature, I mean, and we're going to select the muzzle, as you can see. Now it's coming straight out of the muzzle. So I'm going to select the bone, make sure things like the roll. So the rolls just steer that out. We're going to make sure this is uh, completely vertical because as you can see, it's going up and down just a bit. So we want to change that. So I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to move the head to the word origin. And same thing with the tail. And change the height to 0 0.05. And I'm going to drag it back on over. And as you can see, when I go back into object mode, it's a uh, much closer angle. So now I just want to put it close as I can to the center. That looks like that's going to be 
at this little point right there. So that's where I'm going to leave it. And now we now have that little guy, so I'm going to rename it, call it line trace. And we're good to go on here. So I'm going to create a new collection. I'm going to call this one STG44. Drag the armature, drag line trace, and drag the STG44 in there like so. And now we have this collection with everything we need in it. So I can go ahead and close this. And now we're going to make the FPS arms portion. So I'm going to leave this old uh, blend. Oh, it's already 1.40 in the morning. So I already have this guy FPS arm set up. I need to create a backup. I'm just going to call it backup. Be on the safe side. And all this is is down 10 meters away. We have an empty. So press control A, empty, plane axis. And we just scale it up. And that's all that is down there. It's just a plane axis, but when you're looking at it from a specific view, it's just a perfect crosshair. So that's all that is. Then I simply have a camera that is attached to the camera bone of the uh, mesh, or in most cases you would do like the root or something, depending on how you have your mesh set up. Like that's completely up to you. And that's literally it. So I just make sure everything is else at the world origin. I check and make sure the units are set correctly. So it was 0 0.01. And then we're good to go. We have these things called arms. So I'm just going to go File, Save As, Weapons, SCG44, and FPS Animations. So now I'm in here. And what I can do is I can take the previous blend we just made. So SCG44 blend. Drag and drop, append, collection, the gun, and there we go. So now I can just select the uh, armature, add object constraint. I'm going to do copy transforms, and I'm going to copy the weapon grip button. And now, as you can see, we are set up and good to go there. So all we have to do is just position this bone wherever we want it. So just, you know get it into the position of the hand, kind of however you want. Then whenever you're ready, just you go, you're ready to start animating because it's attached to that bone. And that's how it works inside of the uh, engine as well, because it's attaching to the uh, a socket that we create. And that socket is the weapon grip bone. So. That's pretty much all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to simply select the armature, undo that little constraint dealio. From here, now that we're ready to go, now I'm going to go ahead and export the weapon because this is what I'm actually going to be using. So export as FBX, overwrite it. I still have no idea what uh, things it was talking about. Regarding references, now just go ahead and import it. Should already have my material. And there we go. So we have our gun set up how we want. Looking pretty. Actually, it's a pretty poor job. Well, not to the model, but I didn't do the model, so only my work is the bad part. Go figure. And now we have our gun set up. So from there, we just do kind of like what I did in the video that you either saw before or after this one, where I created the reload animation, and it's the exact same process. So now that I have my project set up, I'm just going to control Z a bit. I want to go ahead and head off of here, and I guess finish up the uh, M1 carbine animations, and then work on this. But yeah, hopefully uh, this was helpful in kind of establishing a fairly quick way to work through uh, your animations for your guns and all that kind of stuff, because I do the same thing for the third person. 
So I just import the weapon the exact same way, and I have my own little third person set up here with my own little, uh, I just set up the rig how I want it, and that's all. So hopefully you found that useful, and I will see you in the next one.